Welcome back, everyone. Today we're back in 8.11 again. <laughs> yeah, we will eventually get to those 9.0 replays. It's coming soon, don't worry. Uh, but we've got this one to show you, and we're going to show you the other use of the E25. I have showed you before its, it's use in a camo situation, and by that what I mean is sitting in a bush and kind of sniping from a distance. And in this case, we're going to get right into the action. We're going to take advantage of this new rework on this map and just roll right up on into the center. Now usually it seems like the scouts on the other side get there first, up to the center area, and I, I feel like it might be a shorter distance. But, well, this time we have to get there first. I guess there just wasn't anybody committed to it, because it took them a long time. But we're going to wait here. I'm waiting for them to come around that corner. I'm figuring that's where I'm going to spot them first. Although what I should be doing is aiming towards the right a little bit more, because I'm gonna not going to see them appear until they're where I'm aiming, and then I have to add reaction time into the picture, which means they're going to be halfway out of sight to the right. And that's kind of a mistake that's going to cost me. See that? <laughs> he just came out of nowhere. Uh, no, but now we're going to have to put the pressure on him, or else he's going to cause havoc. I'm very afraid to do so, though. I'm afraid that if I push up, he's probably got some friends behind him. At the very least, there's three pieces of artillery that can cause me some problems. So I decide I'm going to push up beside this rock prepared for him. And look, there's a T-50. And crap. There's a KB-3. Not exactly what I wanted to see. The T-50 I could deal with. The KB-3, not so much. Ow. There goes half my health, my loader, or my, sorry, my gunner and my driver. Now I better decide which one do I want to use my first aid kit on. I decided on my driver because this thing, it's big advantage. Yeah, although it has that fast rate of fire and a relatively accurate gun. It's bigger advantage in my mind is its driver, its maneuverability. We derp that one into the rock. I mean, denominators are kind of in trouble now. I might be able to survive a shot from the guy. Luckily, he messes up his shot. He misses. We set him on fire. <laughs> Ow. He's toast. Oh. We can get hit from the left from the FB-304, which is that British artillery. And here comes the T-29. Just when we thought we were safe after killing the big threat, the KB-3, Another tier 7 rolls in. <laughs> oh crap. He finished us off the nominators. I didn't feel like there was a whole lot I could do. I thought that, well, if he shoots me, he might be able to kill me in one shot. So regardless, one of us were dead. Wasn't anything I could do for him, really. Now, we're going to keep this guy busy. We're going to hope that this AMX-12T and his friends can get here soon and back me up. Because otherwise, I'm not going to likely be able to take this guy on on my own. Maybe, if he makes mistakes. But in the meantime, I can keep them distracted around this rock, unless their artillery, which is my big worry, comes along to us. And you'll notice here in this game where I'll try to be unloading a few rounds into the engine compartment of this T-29, as many as I can. Oh, there's my allies helping me, artillery. And the reason I do that is because there's a greater chance of setting a tank on fire if you shoot it in the engine compartment. And a tank like the T-29, the engine compartment is in the back. I thought I was toast here when I did this, honestly. He could have shot me. I'm sure you had a line of sight there. I'm sure his gun was pointed at me, but he just probably wasn't aimed, and I messed that corner up a little. There we go. We put that one into the back of him. We're into the engine compartment, just like the last one. And he's going to show me his side again. And there we go. That paid off. He got set on fire. Remember, when you set him, shoot him in the engine compartment, you can set him on fire either by hitting the engine or the fuel tanks. Now we're going to race down here. We're going to try to save this artillery piece. No point in him dying. Just a scout down there, the Leo. Should be able to take care of him quite well. I'm surprised we didn't spot him when we came around this corner, to be honest. Turns out he had moved down there a little bit more. Remember, we don't have a gunner, though. <laughs> we really can't hit anything, even when we do take the time to aim. <sighs> Someone whizzed right by his head. No problem, though. Let's go see what else we can find. It looks like no one else is along the east or north. Looks like they're all along the west. So we're going to go based on that. Let's speed on over here. Because we are a pretty mobile vehicle, remember. As you can see. <laughs> so we're going to go see what kind of havoc we can bring. There's three pieces of artillery. Two of them haven't been spotted yet. And two of the three are, uh, TDs haven't been spotted yet either. Let's see if we can maybe sweep around and get a quick kill on this one. Nope. Our allies are all over that. We have two kills for ourselves and significantly more damage done than we have hit points. 
so we can't really complain. But it, it wouldn't hurt to get a little more done. We're going to speed up this hill then as quickly as we can. It looks like all the artillery have been spotted now. They're putting some pressure on there. And just take a look over on the eastern flank where our artillery is now. Where this guy came from, I don't know. Uh, you're going to see him pop up in a second. There's the Hellcat. Well, crap. Where was he to sneak all the way over there? Was he in the town towards the south, near the center there? Was he along the eastern side? I'm not sure. I tried climbing this hill here. I thought maybe I could get up there and have a good spot. A uh, good view on all the artillery, but I just could not make it up there. I've never tried before, and I thought this is a relatively agile vehicle. So we should be able to do it, if it's possible at all. But I guess not. There's one artillery left there. We could have went for him. I kind of went left a little bit there, hoping that if he was down towards the town area, that small, those few buildings down there, that we would be able to get a shot out off him, on him, or at least light him up for our allies and get some points that way. But it turns out he was still up there where he was last spotted. Not really surprised there, but we're going to speed back, see if we can save our artillery before that Hellcat kills it, but it's not looking good. Hopefully our artillery can fend for himself. I guess we're about to find out. We're just going to take a shortcut down this hill. And nope, the Hellcat killed our M44. Oh well. We still have a chance. Ooh. <laughs> our M41 splashes the Hellcat a little bit. Only does a tiny bit of damage though. Otherwise, if that Hellcat would have took a direct hit, I have no doubt that he would have been toast. Given that he has very thin armor, plus he has an open cap, an open uh, turret, sorry. I pulled up behind that bush, hoping to get a shot on him to light him up. Without him being able to see us, but it, we just didn't have a chance. Now, remember, our gunner <laughs> is still dead. So aiming is terribly difficult, especially with that shell there. I shot way too far ahead of him. But our allied Hellcat has come back, so the Hellcat killed the Hellcat. Not bad, not bad. We came out of there with almost 1,900 damage. And we didn't do half bad. Two kills. I'm happy with that. Hope you guys all enjoyed. I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.